Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, welcome back to the Scale Model Outlaw. Well, for those of you that are here for the first time, welcome to the channel. We hope you like what you see. For those of you that have been here more than once, you now know that I finally got a stand to hold the camera above us so we don't have to look at my big club all the time. Hopefully this will bring a better video for you guys. You'll be able to enjoy it more and, and see more of what's going on. Ah, so let's just jump right into it, guys. Uh, it's going to be a long video. Uh, those of you that have been following know we got the short videos on the Pacer build. And we've been doing long videos as well. Uh, the reason behind that, quite simply, is some people don't like to sit through a long video. They want to see stuff. They want to get to the point and get it done. So... We're uh, trying to do that, but then there's some other guys, uh, you know, I don't know why, but like to, uh, you know, watch the whole thing, listen to it. One of the uh, guys on the uh, subscribers said that he just kind of puts it on in the background, and when he hears something interesting, he'll look over, and when he listens to it, well, he's building. Hey, if I can entertain you that way, I'm all about it. But here we are, we're back, and we're going to be back on the Pacer. Uh, a little bit of an update. Uh, on the Pacer 7 build number 7, I went ahead and put the putty around the taillight bezel, start getting that ready. I told them, sorry guys, I just ate popcorn, I got a piece stuck between my teeth, so there I'm sharing with you. Um, oh, where was it? Oh, I put putty around that, so we're going to sand it down. I shared with the other folks that I had gone back to the inspiration of this build, which was a chip foos video that he made on youtube about and he drew a pacer and he took out the back window and all that so i went back to you know during my what would you call a research or whatever i went back to make sure that i remembered everything and i had forgotten that he said he put uh, in his drawing he put 67 68 camaro bumpers on the front and rear so what do I do? I go back, I remember this, and then I go on to eBay, and I look for a set of 125th scale 67 Camaro bumpers. And believe it or not, guys, I did not have to buy the whole kit. Somebody was selling the front and rear bumpers off of a 67 Camaro model kit, which I thought was pretty unique and maybe even uh, meant to be, if you will. It, uh, it, was, it was one of the first things that popped up on the thing, or on the, on the, on the search bar after I put it in. Alright, enough of my babbling on, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Uh, today, we are going to be taking out the trim and molding. I have already done this side. Got it taken out. Hopefully the camera can see it pretty good. It's gone. And uh, short of some final sanding and getting it super smooth. It looks good, guys. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with the way it came out. It completely left, a, you know, it... it left the scene i might be able to see just a little bit of it there we're, we're not maybe not 100 percent done but it sure is a lot different than what we got going on there so uh what i used to get started with to get the bulk off was this uh flat file just an old flat file i either picked up at harbor freight or probably ebay amazon you guys know i do a lot of my hobby supply shop in there it's cheap and relatively quick uh, Hobby Lobby may have picked it up at Hobby Lobby um, in the past I hadn't been keeping up with that sort of thing I'll try to do a better job for that so I can tell you exactly where to find them but I know you can get them on eBay they're just little red handled cheap files and they come in a set of probably eight or ten yeah probably about eight or ten of them and you know you got round ones square ones flat ones triangle ones they got all kinds so all right here we go now hopefully my sanding on this doesn't jiggle the camera so bad that you guys get seasick i didn't think about that it's, this camera being up top is a new thing guys as those of you who have been following along i was filming from my hobby vice right next to my desk or right next to where i work and uh, it didn't provide the best angle for viewing so i'm hoping that this one will do better looking at my little pre-videos i did and trial and error stuff looks pretty good but i didn't think about wiggling the table now the uh the new arm is clamped in the same place the old clamp was but there's one two three pieces and then a contraption on the end that holds the phone so uh, hopefully it don't wiggle 
because I'm doing this is a long video and I will preview some of it but chances are I won't sit through the whole hours worth of video working on this thing so if it makes y'all seasick leave me a comment down there and uh, maybe I'll send you some Dramamine or something <laughs> The uh, next step up for that tripod, or it's not really a tripod, it's just a, a arm that you can bend and turn up. But anyway, uh, next step up is going to be the filming on the Verb and transferring that over to the phone. So it'll be a real camera, not just a camera on my phone. So I'm hoping that'll bring a better picture, better light to everybody. But in the meantime, we'll make do with what we got. <sighs> Hope everybody's been good. Well, it's been, what, close to a week since we made a long video? I made some uh, quick videos the other day. A product showcase of our Scale Finishes paint, which you all know we love those guys. Go down and check them out. Be sure and use your Outlaw 10 discount code. Sorry, I'm back to work. Um, to the Outlaw 10 discount code, save your 10% down there at scalefinishes.com. Talking about files and such, I know that they uh, are a distributor for Flexifile. I probably need to look into getting some stuff from there. Save 10% and get some files, get some sandpaper, some polishing paper. Sounds like a good time to me. There's nothing wrong with these, but an upgrade never hurts. Never ever hurts to get an upgrade. That thing is just coming down little by little, guys. That file will take a bunch with it, so you got to be careful with it. What I intend to do is get it down pretty close with the file. And when I see I'm really getting into our tape, I will uh, go to the 220 paper. You see right there, I'm getting into it close there. So, like I said, that that other body line is right there. We, I mean, it's not even the width of my file away from where we're working. So we do not want to mess that up. We got to have that there. You'll see here where I stopped it short of the actual fender or flare for the if you look real close there's a little bit of a flare on there because I don't want to sand that flat and make that look goofy and same way with back here we left just enough so when we peel our tape off that little lip will still be there but I'm still paying close attention when I get over there because I don't want to slip through I'm going to grab my eyeballs because I think we're about ready to switch to the uh, sandpaper. But I got to have my extra pair of eyeballs here. And this is where it might get tricky because I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see when I get it up close. But maybe we'll check it out here. The tape's wanting to come off, but we don't want it to come off just yet. Let me get some 220 tape. Y'all can't see it because it's off camera, but I just picked up a really cool, I'll have to do a, I'll have to do a thing on it when I get a chance. Uh, it's a really cool little holder, hobby desk holder thing. Um, I, I honestly didn't pay that much attention to the name. Uh, again, like everything else, I got it on, I think I actually got this one on Amazon. So, uh. But it's, I made it my sandpaper station. It's designed to hold all kinds of different stuff. But uh, I made it my sandpaper station. So I can keep all my sandpaper and sanding pads and sanding sticks all close by. I think I'm going to have to do some maneuvering around. I think I'm going to put it over here. You can't see that, but I'm going to put it over there. Because over here it's kind of cluttering things up. But if I'm honest, right now it's holding the second arm on our stand. So <laughs> we're going to uh, continue to use it as is. All right. We got our sandpaper. I want to cut just a strip of this sandpaper off. I don't want to 
have to manipulate the whole thing. So what I'll do is just cut off about, well, roughly an inch worth, maybe three quarters of an inch, something like that. And then we'll go ahead, put our sandpaper back in this new sandpaper holder. Put our scissors back in our workspace. And then put our file over here in case we need it. Don't put it back just yet. And then we're going to go to sand. This was, uh, this trim molding was kind of a, it stuck up pretty good. You know I mean? It was, wasn't, wasn't laying flat on the body, that's for sure. So we want to take it down nice and easy. Taking our time. All this is about making sure we get it the way we want it to look, but we don't take away any detail that we want to stay. I know I've probably said that a thousand times, but can't stress it enough, guys. Can't stress it enough. We want to leave the good stuff, take away the stuff we don't want. I'm going to come in every once in a while with the back side of my hobby knife and clean up these little lines. And then uh, set on the other side as well. well. When it's all said and done and we get it down where we want, I'll come along with my scribe and dig those back out and make them all match up. But till then, I want to just keep digging them out a little bit with my hobby knife, cleaning them up. We don't want to lose them. They got to be there. Now, when, we're, when we remove the tape, you'd be able to figure out where they were. But if we sand that much that we're to the bottom of that line, then we've probably sanded too much so we don't want to we don't want to sand too much hope everybody had a good week had a good weekend uh, this weekend I got a couple things I'm supposed to do but we'll see what I get done Got a couple of events I'm supposed to go to with the Jeep, but probably won't. I've been to so many. It's not that I don't enjoy going, not at all. I, I enjoy going to them, but it all ends up after a while looking like the same thing. <laughs> I mean, why go Jeeping when I can be here playing with my models? Yeah, I, I enjoy. I enjoy both. I really do. Uh, we were going, it's just in Florida, there's no really good places to wheel, right? So we can't, it's all just mud. Mud's great, don't get me wrong, go splashing around. Back when I was a kid, that's what we did, you know, built mud trucks. But now I like some rocks, some elevation, some articulation. Change it up a little bit. If you, those of you that have never been off-road and don't know what I'm saying, I'm sorry if I'm boring you. It's one of those... Kind of like car racing or owning a Harley or anything like that. When you're into it, you're into it. And if you ain't, then the lingo and everything about it doesn't make sense. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and peel the old blue tape off. Take a look at it. See where we landed. I taped that up good for a reason. And now get the tape back off it's making me earn it. <clears throat> there it comes. There it comes. It's a good opportunity to show you just how well this tape really does work when you use this masking tape as an edge. You can minus, yeah, the tape stuck to me. I mean, you can see where that line, that body line is still there, but we didn't get into any of this and we didn't get into any of this. So now it's down there pretty low. Still, you can still see it. So we're going to come in with some, that 220 and just try to take that little bit off, keeping an eye on, making sure we save our molding. But like I said, it's, it's a good example, man. That tape really kept us out of trouble with this molding on the front and the back. Kept us out of trouble so we didn't get in there. Now, we didn't go down deep enough, but you can rest assured that that paper and that file ran over both of those areas, but it didn't do anything to it. Now we'll take our tape ball, throw that in the trash can. 
of all the tips that I could give somebody about how to modeling or anything like that, the one thing I would say, and I think it's pretty universal, is uh, keep the trash can close because you're going to need it. All right, time to dig in here. Keep an eye on what I'm doing. Get this down and try to get these corners first. So I can see I'm going to go ahead and fold this. Keeping it uh, just, you know, one paper thick, you can get around corners a little bit easier or whatever. You know, down contours, I should say, not really corners, but contours a little bit easier. But when you get up to an edge like this, you kind of want it to stiffen up a little bit. So I'll fold it in half. I can still get around contours, but I get a little bit of stiffness. So I can, <laughs> that sounded bad. Yeah. Uh, get some stiffness out of the paper to make it do what I want it to do which is going to be get rid of that body line but do not take out that tire that trim around the tire working on it working on it Behind the door, <clears throat> if you take a close look, guys, you can see that the body line runs from that fender, and then when you get to the door, it goes up. So back here, from basically from here back, there is no line. So I got to do the top and the bottom. And if you look there, you can see where we did it on that side. The line runs down through there, curves up, goes away, and everything's gone there. So here we go, working on it some more. You can come from this one, you can come from the top, and we're just going to try to round it all off, get the heavies out of there. We're going to let our fine paper, it's a lot of sanding with the fine paper, it really is, but it keeps us from getting in trouble, keeps us from messing up, taking out too much, and then having to work to put it back. We don't want to do that. What did I say on the other video? We don't want to be the ones that do's it nice because we do's it twice. learned a long time ago that that gets expensive when you have to do it nice because you do it twice anybody do anything exciting this week leave me some comments down there let me know what you did exciting this week let me know what you're working on uh, if you would like to send some pictures and, and be able to to chat on messenger Go check out, and you're on Facebook, go check out Scale Model Outlaw on Facebook. Feel free to post up pics of what you're working on. Hit me up on Messenger that way if you got any questions. I know that the uh, YouTube just emails back and forth or in the comment section, and, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel as personal. I mean, I don't want your cell phone number and call you every day, and you don't want mine, but, or if you do, you're not going to get it, but... <laughs> You know what I mean? We can chat on there, have questions about models or whatever. There's something that I'm doing or I'm using that you like and I didn't explain it enough, hit me up. I'll tell you all about it, man. I'll tell you all about There's no secrets. There's no secrets. This isn't one of those deals where I can't tell you something because it's a trade secret or anything like that. If I'm doing something and you're interested in it, let me know. Again, that's on Facebook, Scale Model Outlaw, spelt, same, spelt the same way. And honestly, I think it's even got the same picture as uh, as the YouTube channel. And also, definitely, let me know what you think about the camera. Or at least the new camera angle. We're still filming with the same camera. It's just a different camera angle. If you like it, if you don't like it, if you get sick of me talking about it, let me know in the comments. there's a subject that you ever want to talk about or that uh, you'd like to hear me talk about I should say put it in the comments if you hadn't if you can't tell I'm trying to get some interaction on the page I'm trying to get some feedback from I got a couple guys that are really good about feeding back let me know that yeah you know, they listen to it while they're working kind of like background noise I guess that's better than white noise but 
the background noise. <laughs> We're getting there, fellas. We're getting there. So excited earlier this week when that bracket slash arm that I'm using to hold the camera came in. It came in really fast, of course, you know, Amazon Prime, so it was here with the quickness. I'm like, oh, I was so excited. I was like, man, I gotta set that thing up. I'm like, hopefully my people will like it. And da 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 da. I was so excited for it. And I opened up the package and I'm reading the directions on how to put it together and I get it all together and I put it where I want it. And I looked at the end of it, and there's you need another adapter for the phone. It's a, it's, it only came with just the arm. You had to buy a separate attachment to hold the phone. So I'm like, that's dunk. I was all disappointed. Had to go over in the corner and cry for a little while. <laughs> Skidding. I didn't go in the corner and cry. But I was like, dang. I went to Amazon. What I did is I went to Amazon and ordered the right part that I needed. Got it here, and then I put it... Uh, on got it all hooked up did a little pre-recording you know like we talked about it in the beginning of the video and it was i don't know if the camera was trying to keep focusing or what it was doing but watching it would have made you sick so hopefully we've gotten that figured out and i don't make an hour long video that makes you seasick we're getting there on this scrubbing and dubbing guy There's that awkward silence. I was giving you guys the time to comment. That's why I was being quiet. Giving you an opportunity to go down there and leave me a comment about why the heck do you spend so much time doing this? And who cares about your camera stand? <laughs> We're trying, guys. We're trying. This is not something... Nobody's born with the ability to do this, and I'm trying to learn. I've watched so many how-to videos on how to make a YouTube channel, and I should be a professional, but... Somehow I'm just falling short, but if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. I have no intention of monetizing this channel or trying to make money off of it. If it gets to a situation where I can, I'm, I'm an American. I'm going to do whatever I can, but it's, that's not the, the goal, isn't that? The goal is to bring you entertainment and, and models, man. I just, I just love doing it, and I like sharing with everybody, and if I can help somebody, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Look at there, fellas. Boys and girls, we're getting there. I think I'm going to switch over to my 220 foam paper. But not before I get a drink of my black cherry seltzer water. Yep, black cherry seltzer water, not seltzer. I uh, I don't drink alcohol anymore. Gave up the alcohol to be able to afford getting back into ho uh, models. I uh, felt like it was a better way to spend my money. <laughs> I don't wake up with hangovers. It's a positive thing if I'm at work thinking about what I did last night. Well, meaning that I worked on models and I did something stupid at the bar. I can't think of any scenario where working on models will get me thrown in jail. And it may cost the same amount of money. I ain't gonna lie to you. It may cost the same amount of money. Well, at least I got something to show for it besides a hangover. I 
I ain't against it. I'm just spending my money somewhere else. Ooh, we're getting there. This 220 paper or foam paper works really good, man. You can get it around the corners and stuff. But it just doesn't seem to be as aggressive as the regular paper 220. I don't know why. I can't explain that. I said it before. I'm not a sandpaper engineer. But I know it's different. Coming back in and cleaning these grooves. Like we talked about before. Don't want to lose them. They get filled up with plastic and whatnot. And again... When it's all said and done, we'll come in with our scribe and get it all out of there. <laughs> there may be a better way to do this. Like I said before, I am not a body man never even done body work before done some sheet metal repair welded in some floor pans and that sort of thing but I don't know that outside of a model car I've ever put Bondo putty glazing putty or anything like that on anything I've always been more of the mechanical side like I said I can build you a triangulated four link I can build you, I can bolt on your store bought suspension. I can design and build you a roll cage without ever even using a piece of paper. And it'd be cool when it's done. But what I can't do is body work. <laughs> except, maybe, maybe just except for what we're doing here. I don't even know if I'm doing this right. I'm just doing it. I'm just a doing it. Isn't that what we all do? Fake it till we make it? <laughs> well, that's me. I'm faking it till I make it. Especially with the YouTube part of this. I have no idea what I'm doing on the YouTube. But I'm doing it. This is the part where I was saying on one of the other videos, if you didn't see it, is I, I heard it from Lucas C. And I want to say he heard it from Mark Batten, but I'm not sure. Hobby dude, great guy, great builder. I've never met him. I've never even talked to him, but he's a dang great builder. But uh, whoever Lucas C. heard it from, I heard it from him. He said to treat each part of the build as a build itself. You know, with each part of the kit, if you're working on the motor, that's the kit. If you're working on, in this case, you're working on the body, that's the kit. <laughs> Pay attention to the process, not the ending, because the ending will come together as long as you do the process right. <sighs> Let's hope so, because I'm focusing on the process. damn flat tire on the way to work this morning but if I'm being honest I knew it was coming like the old truck that I drive back and forth to work chase parts in and haul parts around in and you know as the owner of the company you're the guy that gets to do all the stuff that nobody else wants to do I always thought as an employee that the boss man didn't have to do all that stuff but Either I've worked for companies where the boss man found somebody that could afford to pay somebody else to do it, or I didn't work for the right company, or I didn't know what was going on, because I'm the guy that runs to the parts store, I'm the guy that runs here and there, but anyway, my old truck, it, I know the tires are bad on it, actually needs an alignment, and I just hadn't taken the time to do it, and I paid for it this morning, three quarters of the way to work, tire goes flat. 
driver's side front tire flat as a flounder. Well, apparently it was only flat on the bottom, but it still wouldn't work like I wanted it to. But now that being said, as far as being the owner of a company, I knew who to call to come and get me. <laughs> they were only about a mile away and I uh, told them to bring a jack and some impacts, or impact sockets and a battery powered impact and come get my butt. <laughs> and they did. I didn't have to wait long either. I guess when you're paying them, when you're paying the wrecker and they know you're paying the wrecker, then they come pretty quick. Oh, my guys are good guys, man. They, they helped me out. We're all friends. And we work together. There's times that we fight like tigers. But in the end, it's one of those deals like Charlie Daniels said. We can do a little bit of fighting amongst ourselves. But other people better not try it. Kind of like having... <laughs> so you can call your... You can call your sister a bad name, but let somebody else call her a bad name? Yeah, I, I know a little bit about that myself. I know a little bit about that myself. But enjoy those guys. We do a lot of work, man. We get a lot of work, turn a lot of good work out. Very proud of what we produce. Still got a little bit of a ridge here. Just trying to get it out of there without gouging it. <sighs> get it out without gouging it. Or without wiping out the pacer part of our emblem here. Because I'm going to save that. I said before the X is going bye bye. When we get rid of the X and replace that with the Hellcat decal. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Oops. Let's see. We got, see, we got a little bit of that molding still left up here in this fender, so we're going to get the aggressive stuff after it. Try to take out the molding part and leave the fender part. Have any of y'all used the Outlaw discount at Scale Finishes yet? Leave me a comment. Let me know if you used it yet. I used it. Uh, if you do the product, if you look at the product show, the last product showcase video, that is uh, what we picked up while we were there. Ah, sorry, back to my uh, black cherry seltzer. But no, this. They're great products, man. We got some flock in. We got uh, got some new paints, all color, all kinds of new colors. Uh, we got some gunmetal. Actually, I'm sorry, charcoal gray paint. <clears throat> excuse me, paint and uh, flocking and the glue all in a kit for this guy. It's gonna be an orange body with charcoal gray interior. Should look really good. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have some black details in there. We're going to have some uh, some chrome or at least an aluminum color in there for different things. We're going to have a big tack that we got that goes in there. It's got a white face. So it's not going to be all gray and orange, but you know, we'll have some offset colors in there. Looking at the interior, now we're just changing up here a little bit. But looking at the interior, the flocking will all go there. We get some flocking up here around that speaker clock in there uh, probably hit most of the gray because it's a, a base color gray so probably hit most of it with a uh, matte to kind of give it a duller look and then where it's like a leather pocket here a door handle or not door handles but armrest uh, tough to see but there's actually the door handle there and uh, on them old AMC's, the power windows, locks, and that sort of thing were right here on the top. We probably will hit that with a gloss. If I don't change the color, I may change the color to a black and then just do it in flat black. Um, just to give it some contrast. Definitely the speaker grills will be uh, black, flat black. We're building this piece here. That's going to come up and over. Now it'll cover these little pads here, but it's going to come up and over and we'll flock that as well. But I may buy 
Uh, forget if it was, I think it's Iceman, has a uh, speaker and sound system 3D printed stuff. So we might put like a, get this all set up, put a amp in here, maybe some speakers in there, make it look like a, a very fast car, but a very fast car with some tunes. Alright, so here we are, back on this. I think, I think we got her down where we need to get her, fellers. And I say fellers, you know, ladies too. We don't discriminate. We don't hate. We don't discriminate. We like everybody. As long as you're cool, we cool. If you into models, we into that. So y'all hear me talk about what I do for a living? Leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of work you do. You know, what you're working on and what kind of work you do. That we do this with the Jeeps as well. You know, what do you do to support your Jeep habits? <laughs> so what do you do to support your model habits? Like I said, I own that small shop. And uh, the biggest reason I'm able to afford to do it is because I gave up bars and Started on cars. Hey, that's a rhyme. I left the glass bottles in bars and started playing with plastic cars. Yep, now I'll be working on that in my head all night. We will be talking and I'll just probably spit it out of the blue. Something that doesn't make any sense, but I'll think it's funny as I'll get out. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. No, I'm not Matthew McConaughey. I'm more handsome than him. No, I'm not Matthew McConaughey, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn last night. Or Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> Alright, guys. We got that. So let's, uh, I'm going to step off the 250 stuff. Get all our toys out of the way. And step off our 250 stuff and get out our finer grits get it cleaned up a little bit getting it wounded and downed that's so cool let's go ahead and clean it up i don't know if i've i think i've showed this but spotlight hobby sent me this as a free gift it's a little brush man it looks pretty cool Retracts to go back inside. Spotlight hobbies. It was a freebie when I ordered something. Alright. All right, so let's get back on it with this fine paper. This is going to be our 400. The blue is our 400. This is going to help with some of those heavier scratches that the 220 put in us it's not really going to do much for the molding itself as much as it does for undoing some of the scratches that we put in there we'll do the 400 first get it down Then we'll go to the 800 and get it even that much smoother. Then we'll continue working on the doing the body work. And in the end, I will scuff the whole thing with either, probably, probably do it because we've done all the body work. I'll probably do a 1500 and then a 3000 and then lay down my primer. And of course, we're going to sand it clean it up, color coat, whatever, not color coat, but primer sand to make sure that we didn't have any boo-boos in our body work. Once we get all that checked out, we know we're good there, then we'll do some color, and then, and then this real sanding comes, because it's a couple coats of color, sand, a couple coats of color, wet sand, a couple coats of color, sand again. 
it's overkill, but that's how I do it. <laughs> and then when I clear on the end, sand it and polish it out. Body man told me that you know, the paint's great, it's got to be smooth. So paint it, sand it, paint it, sand it, paint it, sand it. But the biggest thing that you got to remember is the clear coat. And his quote to me was, the clear coat is the glass that you look at the paint through. And uh, prior to that, it you know didn't make a whole lot of sense. But when he put it in those words, I was like, okay, that makes complete sense to me now. I'm talking about telling me what kind of work you do. I mean, if you're some sort of secret agent spy, I guess you don't have to tell me what you do, but <laughs> I don't know how many secret agents, double agents, or secret agents, or spies that we have in the modeling community, but you never know. Lucas C. could be a spy. He's clever like that. I think he could be a spy. I ain't saying he is. I'm saying like he could be a double agent, right? He could he could be working for the U.S. and getting Russian intel, bringing it back and telling us all about it. He, he, he's that kind of guy. Just joking, Luca. You're great. We love you. Now, my buddy Jason up there in New Hampshire at the Blue Ox Model Shop, there's no way he's a spy. No. That accent. They they would he can't he can't blend in nowhere with that accent. People are gonna pick him out, no doubt. He might big guy. He might could be like a security guy for this for the for the spy. Maybe that's what he is. Maybe he's the muscle for the spy. If y'all don't know who I'm talking about, we've been living under a rock because those are two great guys. But uh, check out Lucas C on YouTube and Blue Ox Model Shop. I've talked to uh, the guys at Blue Ox, Jason. Nice guy. He's uh, Actually, I think he's even subscribed to our channel. As soon as I can get my graphics designer to make us up a card and get my logo done, then uh, we'll exchange some shop cards with it. And that's another thing, guys. If you, uh, if you have shop cards or you would like a card when it comes in, leave me a comment. Let me know. I'll get back to you. Maybe uh, if you go to the Facebook page, maybe we can message back and forth addresses and I'll be able to send you a car. They're not, I'll be honest with you, it ain't going to be tomorrow. I just literally was talking to my guy at the graphics designer this afternoon. He's, they're, they're very, very good friends of mine. In fact, I sponsor the owner's Jeep, but they're also very, very busy. So he told me he'd get it handled for me, and I got complete faith in him. But if you're anywhere local and you need some graphic design work done, and trust me, they'll get to you before they get to me because you guys are the paying customers, and I, I try to look for deals. But uh, Eye Candy Designs, check them out on Facebook. And I'll, uh, check them out on Facebook, or you can Google them, whatever you want to do. Great, guys. They... Uh, Make all my shops for my t-shirt. Or actually makes all my shops for my t-shirt. How about they make all the t-shirts for my shop. All my. Uh, if you look at that sticker. They designed and made that sticker. Oh do I got any more that they made? No just that one. Well that one and that one. Those are uh, both designed and made right there. At Eye Candy Designs. Steve Woodall and Carl down there. Taking care of me. We, uh, Steve's got an overlanding rig that he uh, goes everywhere in. It's a J Jeep JT, the new Jeep truck, diesel. And uh, he goes everywhere in it. And he, you know, When he doesn't do the work himself, he usually comes down and sees us and lets us work on his. He's, um, his website is Adventure X. Check out Adventure X. And... Uh, that's his website, his YouTube page. If you're into the 
whole overlanding thing. Go check him out. Good guy. Don't cost nothing to subscribe, like, and mash the bell. That's for sure. Well, we are getting there, guys. Look at that. I think it actually starting to look a little bit something. We got rid of it. I can still see a little bit there. But we'll keep it rubbing on it. Gotta go to, a, not this weekend, but next weekend, gotta go to my niece's wedding. Just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. You got anybody on here from Nashville area? I'm going to a little town. I guess it's a little town. I really haven't been there before. So. Dillon, Tennessee. Anybody ever heard of Dillon, Tennessee? That's where we're going to a wedding. We got to be leave here Thursday night after work. Get up there. From here, it's about eight, maybe ten hours, depending on how many times Mama's got to stop and go pee. But. uh Get up there, get checked into the room, maybe take a nap real quick, do some sightseeing on Friday. Uh, myself and my sister are going up. It's my uh, older brother's only daughter's wedding. So, going to that. So, myself and my sister and my girl all want to go to Nashville into town Friday night. Go check it out. I don't know what the plan is for Saturday with the after party and all that. So we're going to sneak into town Friday night. Have a bus of hootin' tootin' time in Nashville. Got a buddy that lives up there. I got to reach out to him let him know I'm coming. If I go to Nashville and don't tell him I'm coming and he finds out, he'll be mad with me. I ain't seen him in years. So I know he'd be mad with me. I'm coming to you, Daniel. How many of y'all have ever done that? Gone somewhere and forgot you had a buddy in that state or that town or whatever and didn't tell them that you was coming? And they found out and got all mad at you? It happens. Ooh, that's getting there. It's getting there. That's not getting there. What was it old Hannibal from the A-Team said? I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Looks like that old plan come together pretty well. Guys, I'm going to live with that. There's that side we did tonight. There's the side I did the other night. Again, we'll hit it with primer, and that'll definitely tell on us down the road. Well, I can't sand. Well, I guess I could put putty on this side, and then sand this one down. And I tried not to get ahead. I try not to get ahead of the people that uh, don't like to do the long videos. So I suppose I can sand this side down, put putty on there, because that's where I left them was with putting the putty on the middle or on the bezel of the rear tail light. So I could probably sand this one down, see where we're what we're looking like, and then re putty that one. So we get to keep on moving, and yet we don't leave our short timers behind. I think I'll do that very thing. Because there's so many contours, and I want to bring it down slow, I am going to use my 220, but I'm going to use my 220 padded paper. Because I've said it before, this stuff is. You think 220 is 220, but it isn't, because this stuff is much less aggressive. It, it might be just because of the different name. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and trim this little bit off. Using these pieces like this, the end will get wore out on you. I've probably I've done every bit of sanding with 220 foam on this car with that much sandpaper and the truth is I probably could get more out of it but we're going to cut it back and see if we can't get after this line a little bit get this bezel yeah 
either way, 220 is awfully aggressive, so you guys got to be careful with it. It will eat even this, you know, the foam stuff. It'll eat. It'll eat really well. If you're not careful, you'll take away what you want to save. I'm still kind of having to wait for the bumpers to get here to see exactly what I'm going to do with this corner but it's my intention to bring on that 67 it's just a real thin bumper right there's no tag in it. real thin bumper and it's of course this one will be chrome but we'll change that but the idea is I want to bring the top of that line right around to the top of that bumper we're going to fill this in I've actually already cut the bottom of this off sanded this out and we're going to fill that in and then our bumper will come right across there and come all the way to the other side but i really don't know how much i can dig in here and how much i can take out until i get the bumper and see what it looks like but we'll get the we'll get the bezel finished up um, put some more putty on the other side and let it harden up and then when we do a short video for the short guys the short I don't want to call them a short guys. That sounds bad. Uh, the guys that don't have time enough to sit through the long video, we can go ahead and sand for them and then show them what it looks like when it's done. I'm going to have to add more to this one anyway. That white putty shrinks when you put it in there, bro. I mean, it'll shrink. If anybody ever done any welding, that's exactly what I'm, when I'm laying that putty in there out of that, well, I'm talking about it, I might as well pull it out and show it to you. This is Valero putty. Uh, I know we've talked about it before, but you guys, that might be new. I use this, it's in the, they call it an acrylic resin. Let me get the label off of it, or the sticker off of it, so maybe you can read some of it. Okay. Keep my five fingers in there. But it's acrylic latex or acrylic resin, and uh, it's got a tip on it. So when I'm laying it in there, it's like my my MIG torch. That's what I think about of my, in my head when I'm laying that in there. Is I'm trying to make a bead just like I would with a MIG torch. That's why I love this stuff. It works. It works well. It just shrinks because it's. I'm guessing it's water-based. Well, goodness. All the stuff I got, I need to get me some goof off and get these stupid stickers off. Waste half of my video peeling the sticker off. But acrylic resin plastic putty from Bolero. Again, where did I get it? I may have picked this up at Rob's Hobby and here in Ocala. I'm sure hobby stores will sell it. But if not, probably back to the same old, same old eBay or Amazon. There we go. Look at that. I'm on a mission now. Got it. You can do it. But yep, there it is. 100% acrylic resin plastic putty. Works great. But like I said, I use this part like a MIG torch. I mean, I find myself holding it like I do. Uh, even if I'm, you know, for uh, TIG. There we go. I knew there was a word that I was thinking of. Even like a TIG, you know, hold it like a TIG rod. But uh, that's, the, that's the goal I'm after. And those of you that don't weld, I'm sorry. Use terminology you don't know, but... <laughs> It's easy enough to figure out. Alright, back at it. Oh. It's aggressive enough on there in some spots that I want this paper. This paper is definitely more aggressive than that 
Well, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe it's brains. I have no idea. We'll leap through that putty right now. But it'll also scratch the bejesums out of the plastic that makes it more work later on to sand smooth. So it's kind of a trade-off to get the heavies off and then get that thing out of the way. I didn't tape it off because it's such a bump, you know, that it's, that it's so raised that I should be able to just get to it. But. And I am. It's coming. So is Christmas, but it's coming. Speaking of Christmas, we were in the Lowe's the other day, and it's not even daggone Halloween yet. And they got all their Christmas stuff out. What in the world? I uh, don't get as excited about Christmas as I used to. Of course, when you get to be older, that's what happens. But I'm excited for the little kids. and mine, Mine's grown, so it's not as much fun as it was when they were little. Or when I was little, because I used to get models for Christmas when I was little. Now I have to buy them. This, this, this ain't fair. just not right y'all just not right man should get models for Christmas every year his whole life it's the right thing to do so ladies if you're on here and you love your man I have a model for Christmas he will love you forever and ever and if he does it well just Call me and I'll give you my address. You can send me the model. Give the old eyeballs a break. Give me another swig off my drink. Ah. Oh, I'm gonna take a breather for a second, guys. What else can we talk about? You guys gotta leave me some comments, or maybe I can go. Well, if I go live, it's the same thing. I don't, I don't know how. I've never gone live on YouTube. I've gone live on Facebook a lot. Usually when we're off in the Jeeps, we'll go live on Facebook if we've got service and give everybody a chance to watch what we're doing. But these times when it's just me talking to y'all, trying to come up with ideas, it'd be nice to have a comment. Somebody give you a comment. Maybe we could, well, that's more of a podcast if you do that. I was just thinking out loud about getting somebody else in the room with us, but that's more of a podcast and it's a different form. So and it wouldn't be live either. I'm sure somebody will come up with something where when you're YouTube and you, I guess they did, they call YouTube Live, you can answer questions right then. Have y'all checked out the new podcast from that Lucas C, Chuck, BG, and uh, Jason from Blue Ox Model Shop are doing? It's pretty cool. Jason introduced it to me. And I went and checked it out. I actually downloaded Spotify just to get the podcast. But it's a uh, model, scale model podcast, I think it is. I'll have to double check it. I'll uh, see if I can't link it in here to this, to this video. Get everybody to come over there and check that out. It's pretty cool. Just some guys sitting around talking about modeling and different events coming up. And if I had to say it was like something, it's kind of a loose version of going to your local uh, model club. Except there's only four guys. 
and they're doing the talking, but it's, it's not a bad thing at all. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Talking about different events, we've got, uh, I'm not sure where Chuck or Bee Gees at of. I believe they're all out west with the exception of Jason, who is in New Hampshire. I think the rest of them are all out west. They might need somebody. And they got the northeast covered with Jason. They might need somebody from the southeast. You know, just to put their two cents in. Hint, 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 guys, if you're watching. I actually uh, got introduced to Chuck's channel through that podcast. Somehow I didn't know about him. And I've been watching his stuff. And he... Uh, is the very type, very same type of builder as I am. You, you can't hardly build them out of the box stock. You got to come up with creative stuff and different stuff. And he's a super good builder as well. Comes up with neat stuff, kit bashes, and uh, uses uh, 3D printed parts. Speaking of 3D printed parts, I was on one of the websites or one of the Facebook sites. I'm sorry, and. Uh, there was a guy, I think he was just curious, but he popped a question up on one of the sites and wanted to know, does anybody build without using 3D parts anymore? Uh, I answered him with, I can, I just choose not to because some of the 3D stuff it just enhances it, but anybody can build out of the box, but how about you? Do you build using 3D parts? Do you not build using 3D parts? Do you, do you buy your 3D parts? Where do you buy your 3D parts from? Uh, we have Iceman here on the table, and you know he was because he sends us a sticker. Where is he? He's around there somewhere. There he is. There he is. Because he sends stickers with his stuff, but I have no affiliation with him. His, his products are great, but um, we deal with Texas 3D as well. I really like their stuff, and uh, he does. He, he'd be on here, but he hasn't sent a sticker with his stuff yet. You know the scale finishes did, and they get up front and center. I love their logo from start to finish. That's right, guys. Scalefinish.com. Go check them out. What do you do when you check them out? You fill your cart up full of their awesome products. And you scroll to the bottom. And you put in Outlaw10, all in caps. Gets you a 10% discount. Scalefinishes.com. Love those guys. focus on trying not to booger this thing up I got that old heavy paper out now we're we're removing some putty for sure get this down get it smoothed it out yeah we're gonna have to add some red stuff in here even as heavy as I put that in there and I thought I put it in there pretty heavy for lack of better terms, as my fellow welders will understand, I thought I put a bead, a pretty heavy bead in there, but I apparently did in most places because that's what I'm having to sand off. But either it shrunk up more than I anticipated, or my, you know what, there was some gaps in there because it did not fit together very well. It's an old kit. This is, I think this kit's from like 77, 76, 77. So it may be that... It uh, just sucked up the putty, but either way. Ooh, that was almost a mistake. It acts like it ain't even dry yet, but it's been in there for ever. We're not going to bring that. No, we are going to bring that line across. Well, there'll be some, be some red. Nope, no, we don't. We're gonna bring that right all across. I put that putty on there two or two days ago. But it's still acting pretty rubbery. Well, we don't want it if it ain't gonna stay in there, because all that's gonna do is cause us a problem down the road. So. We'll cut that off. Fill it in with some. Actually, we'll see. We'll see. Just a little piece, but 
That's going to be helpful to get where we want to go, though. <laughs> See, things happen for a reason, guys. Things happen for a reason. We're getting closer, but if you look real close you can see that indentation in there that's going to show up so we'll get that out keep rubbing on it rubbing on it rubbing on it I've been seeing people doing like, uh, and that, I'll be honest with you, uh, I don't know if anybody ever saw it or paid any attention to it, but well, I know some people saw it because it got 25,000 views, and I mean, there was, there was a seven, no, I think it was 76,000 views, 25,000 comments, and I don't know. But it was a video, or not even a video, it was a reel that I made of my workspace. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have built some pretty impressive Jeeps. I've been around people in the off-road business that, you know, were big shots and filmed it and took pictures and, and all that. But I did a little video of my workspace and I posted it up on a few of the Facebook sites, uh, Lucas C's being one, and it friggin' blew up, and when I say blew up, my phone wouldn't stop beeping, I mean for days, not mad about it, don't get me wrong, I was just, uh, <laughs> it was different, I didn't think anybody would give a hoot, and, uh, but they did, everybody seemed to like it, I tell you that to say, I would wonder if you guys would be interested in me doing a, you know, exclusive to the page video of the workbench, how I have things laid out, uh, different kits that I have. I know, I think I've done some just, you know, brief pictures and whatnot, but if, I guess what I'm asking is would anybody inter be interested in seeing the detail of the, of the workspace? If you are, let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to grab the camera by the horns and show you around, show you how that new sanding station that we just came up with, the different products we use for paintbrush stuff. Like anything that I put on with a paintbrush, if you've seen the pictures, anything that I put on that is brushed on is in front of me on the uh, paint shelves. Anything that's sprayed on is over in the spray booth area. Of course, my glues are here. I keep my glues at arm's length. Now our new sanding station. Uh, our paint station's here. Uh, we've got a dolly over here that'll have mini brushes, cotton swabs, and my um, cutting tools. Right underneath here is a couple drawers that hold different uh, well, tools. This has got a lot of tools in it. This has got this side's got markers in it. Uh, markers and uh, chrome pens and the like but if you're interested in seeing the detailed version let me know i'll make i'll be happy to make a short video of everything and show you all my setup and maybe it inspire you to do something or maybe you can show me how yours is tell me how yours is and inspire me to come up with something different i know why i wanted that in there because i'm going to take that light out that's why we got that where that, where that brake light, it used to be the reverse light right there. We're going to fill that in too. So I'm going to probably use red on there because this stuff seems to be picking off pretty easy. But I'm going to use some red on that uh, Bondo epoxy right there. Not epoxy. Bondo glazing putty. Use that right there and get rid of that all together. And our tail light eventually will start right there at that hole and go around to there and stop. Everything else will be the same color. Get it all Frenched out and look cool. But again, I can't do too much of that until I get them bumpers in here. 
Let's see exactly how they're going to play out. I'm telling you, for some reason, this putty did not harden up like it normally does. I mean, some of it did, and some of it got real rubbery. Maybe there was something on the... Could have been some oil or something on the kit, I guess. Or on the body, I guess. Because it, uh... It's pretty rubbery. And I really gooped it on there. Yeah, we're getting if we're getting after it with a knife, then it's yeah, it's gooped on there. That's my fault. And maybe that's what it was. Maybe I just had too much in that area. <clears throat> Oops, if it filled the crack. Again, this is where the bump where I'm shaving now is where the bumper's going, so probably won't ever see back here, but still want it to be right. It doesn't matter. If it gets seen or not, if it needs to be right, if it's on here, it needs to be right. Uh, you guys may have saw in one of the other videos when I was cutting the tape that I saved the gold blade that I wasn't using that was that didn't think was sharp enough to cut the tape the way I want it for that precision cutting. Well, this is that blade that I put in here. And this was the blade before it. This one's got glue. This is like your, you know, I use this. I use the old gold blades of when I can't do precision work with them anymore. And they become my, instead of being a, a precision tool, they become my hammer. They do just about everything. And this one has, has hammered out. <laughs> He's ready to give up the ghost. Try to get the most out of everything, guys. None of us are, well... I don't know that any of us are rich enough to be able to throw good stuff away. And even if I was, I still wouldn't. But yeah, compared to that other one, this one is like super sharp. It wasn't sharp enough to do that detailed tape cutting that I wanted. But boy, howdy, it'll handle cutting this putty like I want it to. Get it trimmed down. Look at that. That was... Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was looking for. Alright guys, 